good afternoon to all of you i hope you all are fine after morning practicals let's start with our today's lecture hello nimishka so this lecture we will try to wind up with the current chapter which is on woodwind instruments i'm going to take an overview of the remaining instruments and some of the problems other problems you can try solving in assignment or as practice get your pen and paper handy if we need it also somebody today pointed me that our sec our second assignment submission date is fairly close and we have not yet covered much of the syllabus so please consider it postponed maybe up till say 10th of march i will update the new date in the canvas but not now maybe after a week or so so that we have a best estimate that how long we take more to finish the current unit so i will give you a date which is after the finishing the current unit so that you can complete second assignment and maybe some stuff from chapter 8 so this assignment is getting little bigger but fair enough you will get little longer time to finish it as well so that will sort out that problem let's go ahead in today we are going to talk about first oscillating air streams and then we are going to talk about flute recorder or english flute and then we will take up some problems give me a minutes break yeah we go ahead so the first thing we are going to talk about oscillating air streams so typically oscillating air streams or sometimes also the whistles if you all we all practice twisting our tongues and lips to whistle so all these are the examples of air streams i have two examples in front of me i have a pen cap in which i am trying to blow and maybe create some air stream air whistle so i hope you can all hear this another example i have a fairly half a liter or maybe 750 ml large bottle i'm trying to uh, whistle at the top blow air at the top and see what is the result so you could hear this sound you could from the sound only you can make out that one is at a high frequency typically the pen cap this one while this is at lower frequency 
So that is decided by the length of the air column. Our present discussion makes tries to make us understand that how does these vibrations come into. These are again the examples of woodwind instruments. So remember whenever there are vibrations, whenever there is a sound creation, there has to be a vibration. And for vibration, there has to be a mechanical element, some sort of uh, energy conversion potential to kinetic, kinetic to potential has to happen for these vibrations to happen. Now if you recall the clarinet that we had talked about for two lectures had something called as vibrating a reed, a very thin long plastic or wooden sheet which vibrates up and down. A simpler example of reeds is straightforward, get a chocolate wrapper, pull it with both the hands and just blow across the taut sheet on both sides. It starts vibrating. That's a vibration. That's a vibrating reed. Now, in case of these bottle vibrations and pen cap vibrations, etc., we are talking about there are no physical reeds for vibration. But here, here air itself vibrates to create something called as some vibrates like a real reed. It is normally referred as air reed. Now a standing wave is created in the air column. Examples is simple here. You hold the bottle and blow it at this particular direction to begin with. But remember if you blow straight away this way nothing will happen. Typically you have to tilt so that there is a slight hitting of the edge. The moment the slight hitting of the edge happens the pressure waves are injected, they are reflected from the other end and they come back and they keep oscillating back and forth. The entire air column starts vibrating. This gives you a peculiar note. In fact you can fill it up with water and at the bottom and you can re reduce the length and increase the pitch. If you recall, you have already done this in resonance tube experiments in 12th grade where you used to fill up the bottle and you used to use a tuning fork to create the sound. So that's exactly what is happening here. repeated. Now next topic of discussion is flute. Flutes are of various types. Typically uh, flutes are vibrating because of vibrations of air column once again. They typically vibrate at the frequencies where there are dip, dips in the impedance curves. Remember in the I had spoken of impedance curves in the last class. So Wherever there are dips, wherever the impedance is less, the high amplitude vibrations are created. It has a cylindrical bore depending upon its size. It can be from 1 cm to 2 cm and tube is open at both ends. Remember, the flute here uses a tube which is open at both ends. Unlike in clarinet where it is assumed that the tube is closed at one end. So it has a slightly different characteristics because of that. Indian flute is mostly made by bamboo, but western flutes are made by plastics and metal and sometimes some other wooden materials too. Typically the flutes made by bamboo, they it's difficult to control the voice quality beyond an extent or sound quality beyond an extent. So some of them are very good, some of them can't be very good. In metal flutes, the sound quality can be controlled in much better way. So all the metal flutes, if you ignore the performance of the person who is playing them, 
they all would sound similar at least theoretically while the bamboo flutes two bamboo flutes of the same size and diameter roughly same diameter would sound fairly differently because of internal texture of the wood most of the western flute is uh, of course a flute can play in multiple octaves typically if you get hands on your on a flute i recommend you people at least to do one project work on flute um if you are interested just go to a local toy shop whichever shop get a normal flute which is say of 50 rupees or so and you can record its sound in audacity and figure out its what are its harmonics so normally a flute can play in multiple octaves uh typical indian bamboo flutes can play in three octaves the middle octave which is very easy to play but then it can play in the lower octave which comes after much practice and upper octave which also comes after much practice most of the western flute and some of the bamboo flutes also are called fipple flutes or they are blown from uh, blown longitudinally so if this is the length of the tube they are blown from this side that's how the flute is typically played it is called fipple flute so most of the western countries they play fipple flute typically in a fipple flute you inject the air from this end the air travels and there is a knife edge here you can see at this point there is a knife edge which has been placed the knife edge disturbs the flow of the air so remember this is a long narrow tube that actually fixes the direction of flow of air so it does not matter you you blow into it this way or this angle or this angle by the time the air escapes from this side because of its long narrow nature its direction is fixed it goes and hits the knife edge the knife edge disturbs the uh, flow of air some of the air escapes out remember so some of your effort is wasted remaining air goes inside and sets the pressure wave the pressure wave travels towards the other end comes back reflected keeps traveling on both the ends and stationary wave formation happens remember that at this point this is open to the atmosphere so the pressure becomes atmospheric pressure and other end also which is open the pressure is atmospheric pressure therefore this is a tube which is open at both the ends there will be an anti node formation at both the ends and node formation in the middle at any moment the length of the tube is equal in fundamental mode the length of the tube is equal to the wavelength of the music so moving up a hole so the, there are number of holes which are placed over here as i said this is the fipple opening you blow from this end from here all the measurements are done from this end do remember this if problem solving comes you have to remember that from fipple opening where the knife edge is placed you have to make all the measurements if you are doing projects also be careful to take measurements from this point so for example typically in this flute all the holes are placed beyond half of the length the length of the flute or length of the fipple flute ah uh, in indian tradition we call it bansuri so do remember that so length of the bansuri or fipple flute or there are different names also in different cultures is measured from this opening till the end most of the holes are placed beyond the half length 
so this is length l by 2 at which the first hole is placed and the rest of the holes are generally placed equidistant number of holes vary number of holes vary from vary from traditions to traditions north indian traditions use six holes south indian traditions use eight holes bigger holes allow more air to flow pushing up pushing the anti nodes up thus increasing the pitch so if the hole is bigger remember we have talked about the effect of tone hole on pitch if the hole size is bigger then it is equivalent to reducing the length so suppose all these holes are closed say up till here and all these are open so what happens is the length of the length of the entire tube effectively reduces up till here okay larger holes means that more effective is the reduction so whenever a large hole is created here the air pressure inside becomes atmospheric pressure and the length remain becomes this much suppose you close this hole the length will increase further close this hole also length will increase further so length will be there up to the first opened hole from the left side in this diagram so for example if i have say from this to this all the holes are closed say from a to f all the holes are closed then what is the effective length will it be from here to here or will it be from here to e answer is effective length is from up to the first open hole that is up till c sharp so that is how the hole will affect you keep on closing them you keep on increasing the length and lowering the pitch you keep on opening the holes you keep on decreasing the length and increasing the pitch do remember that then there is an example of side blown flute which is very common in india some of the modern western musicians are also using side blown flute it has number of advantages the blowing is happening from this point and the holes array of holes are kept again at some distance this is some measurement of a western flute typically called as a bomb flute but indian flute is there after the halfway mark these holes now you blow directly into the embouchure holes and advantage is that unlike in the previous case where some of the sound energy because of the knife edge was given outside some of the effort was wasted here nothing of that sort happens here the the all the energy is focused driven inside so you have lot of uh, good sound output at a lower effort comparatively at a lower effort again in the previous case as i said there was a tube or the narrow passage which fixes the speed uh, direction of air and air hits the edge at a constant angle all the time if i go back and see then because of this passage the angle at which the air hits the knife edge is fixed all the time but that is not the case in this because here you are blowing directly you can not only change the pressure but you can also change the direction in which you are blowing so if you have this kind of flute at hand you will find that changing the direction and pressure with produces varying effects flow rate can be controlled greater range of volume and expression so this flute generates a greater range of volume and expression in sound again mostly cylindrical sometimes also made up of metals but indian musicians still prefer the flutes made up of bamboo this side is normally packed and uh, sometimes some packing from inside is parabolic in nature okay here this air speed is very slow this is an open end 
other end is also open or whichever hole is open up till that point so it is again the tube which is open at both the ends we use large holes to create large volume of sound and the fingering system is more or less like clarinet and saxophone only so here i have a small demo if you talk about woodwind instrument then of course it cannot happen that you don't talk about the maestro hari prasad chaurasia so let's have a minute of listening from him before we go ahead Okay, we can go ahead. You people can, if you are interested, you can listen to him further. He has visited Xavier's many a time, particularly during the IMG programs. This is called a recorder on an English flute. These are plastic little flutes. These are available. I have seen local toy shops keeping these kind of flutes. Very interestingly, uh, again. Uh, a similar phenomena you blow from this side but then holes are little up they are not after halfway mark they are much about that typically it is softer compared to the other flutes so you this is your effort blowing pressure versus the uh, your frequency or the pitch so this is little softer so that actually ends our discussion uh, on various types of woodwind instrument just to remind you we have covered the instrument clarinet we have that we have done in much detail then we are we talked about flute another instrument which which suitable details saxophone again not that much of detail but a little bit then the normal uh, air streams oscillations and then finally the recorder now can we look at some problems can you overblow a bottle to obtain a higher note now i don't know if any one of you have tried it but i can definitely try let's see if it happens with this bottle but i am sure that it happens with the bisleri bottle if you have an empty bisleri bottle you can open it blow at one of blow at the edge of it very softly you will get the fundamental sound fundamental note then you blow it hard very strongly and you get a higher pitch created 
the next fundamental uh, the third harmony these are the tubes closed at one end so you get first and third harmony the answer to this question is yes i don't know whether with my current bottle it will work or not let me try It, it's difficult with this. This bottle has a very wide mouth, so not very easy. Perhaps you people can try with the Bisleri bottle. Let's go to the next problem. Is it possible to fit a flute type head joint to a clarinet? Remember, the clarinet has a reed kind of vibration. Flute has a narrow opening and a knife edge to which the air stream hits. So, what will happen if you take that flute? head joint that is that narrow opening and uh, knife edge and fix it to the clarinet instead of reed what will happen what would you expect the lowest note to be so that is one question i hope somebody of some of you can try to answer so if you know the answer please post it try to recall i have already discussed even today what kind of tube is a clarinet what kind of tube is a flute what will happen if you attach the flute like head joint to a clarinet what can happen in that case So yeah, I mean, if you have guessed it, perhaps it is quite an easy thing to guess. We have already discussed clarinet because of the reed system is a tube which is closed at one end. We have just discussed the vibrations of reeds. Flute, because of that embouchure hole, it is open at both the ends. So what will happen if you fix the flute type head joint to a clarinet? You will convert the clarinet from a tube which is closed end to a tube which is open at both the ends. So now what is the difference between two tubes having same length but one is open tube and one is closed tube? So you all know in the closed tube only odd harmonics are present. In open tube both the harmonics are present so clarinet will produce all the harmonics now but what would you expect the lowest note to be can anyone try to attempt that would it change would it remain the same the answer is very straightforward think about the formula n is equal to v by n is inversely proportional to length now here you are just changing the head joint but you are not changing the length of the tube so if you assume that the length of the tube remains constant in that case the lowest note will remain the same lowest note will not change that's correct Gemma. or so it will not change remember that Going to the next question, making use of the fact that speed of an air jet is approximately proportional to the square root of the blowing pressure. Show that the doubling of the blowing pressure increases the, the jet speed by 40%. Atharva, no, it will remain the same because the length is fundamental remains the same but the more harmonics will be added. From where does this formula come? The speed of an air jet is approximately proportional to the square root of the blowing pressure. Anyone knows? If you, if you recall, 
the Bernoulli's principle, then P plus half rho V square plus rho GH is constant. So in that, if you ignore rho GH term, assuming that it is horizontal, you will find that the pressure and velocity have this kind of relationship. The, the square root of the blowing pressure is proportional to the speed. Then it's a very straightforward problem. Doubling the blowing pressure. So you double the P1 by P2 is root of V1 by V2. And therefore you double the pressure then you square both sides. Once you square, the 2 square will become 4. And that if you solve further, you get as 40%. So that becomes your final answer. The length of a flute is about 60 cm from embouchure to open end. What do you expect the frequency of the lowest note to be? Can anyone solve it quickly? That's an easy one. Really easy. You can take velocity of sound as 340 meter per second. So yeah, anybody, can anyone tell me? What formula are you going to use? Remember it's a tube which is open at both the ends. So the formula will be very straightforward. Is V by 2L. For fundamental it's V by 2L. So V by 2L. Yes, it could be 5.6, 5.6 hertz, wait a minute, let me see, V by 2 L, did you convert it into meter, Jema? V by 2 L, it's centimeter, V is 340, 340 divided by 120 into 10 power minus 2. 340 divided by 120 should be giving you a little bit more as your answer. So please solve this. V by 2L that will be your formula. V is 340 meter per second divided by 2L. L is 60 into 2 that will give you 120 centimeter converted into meter is 1.2 so you get 340 divided by 1.2 340 divided by 1.2 that gives me 283 roughly around 283 hertz that's right Atharva. so that would be the answer for this do remember these are your 12th level formulae or FYBSC we have repeated them 11 12th level formulae we have repeated in FY so nothing is new here you have to remember them so anyway, those were the sample problems we solved. Some problems are given as assignment. Please solve them. Rest you practice on your own. We can stop here. We have finished this chapter. Next class, we are going to start with the next chapter. And I think that is about the speech production or the how the human voice produces sound, human vocal cord produces sound. Thank you till then.